Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. In my video where I showed some of my initial pairings for this coming season, there was a VPI Exanfic possible het for clown male uh, that was being paired to a couple of possible double het Exanfic clown females and many of you asked about that little male. I did mention he was a, a little male. Actually, not that little. He is a year old and 800 grams. I thought I would just uh, talk a little bit about that VPI Exanthic Clown project, uh, some of the snakes that are involved in it and some of the odds. And we'll talk a little bit about using first time males and what to watch out for. I am confident this guy is big enough. Um, he has popped and there are uh, sperm plugs or sperm packets, if you like, being produced. So I know he is capable. He will breed at some stage during this year with those females. Uh, so we just have to be a little bit patient and uh, keep pairing them up. Sooner or later they will pair. It's very tempting to uh, use a backup male, as it's called. But in this case, um, a backup male uh, doesn't suit the project that I'm working on. So I have to be a little bit patient. It is a long shot. The females are double het and he is a uh, het for clown, although he's a visual exanthic. So one of the reasons that we chose to use the visual exanthic is that at least the exanthic part of the equation will be proved out in the females. If we get visual exanthics, we'll know the females are at least uh, het for exanthic. Um, we don't know whether the male is het for clown or whether any of the females are het for clown. So if we get a visual clown, we'll prove that aspect out. Uh, but if we don't, there's no telling which of those snakes is not the het. So I do have some other combinations that we can use. So let's take a look at the VPI Exanthic Clown Project. So this is the little male VPI Exanthic that I showed in my season opener video. He's the guy that was showing no interest at all with the double het females. Uh, but he is actually a year old and 800 grams and this is a male that is certainly uh, capable of breeding females and I'll show you in a moment how you can check that. Um, but this is a visual VPI exanthic and we don't know there's no visual expression of whether he's het for clown or not but at least the exanthic side of the equation is taken care of and that's the reason for using this guy with the double hets. So this is the male, this is a VPI exanthic 66% Het for clown. Okay, this guy is a young male, it's his first season. Let me show you how to check whether your male is actually sexually mature and ready to breed. We can pop him and check for sperm plugs. Let's just take a quick look at how you pop a mature male. The principle is exactly the same as with hatchlings. A little bit of pressure just behind the cloaca, but the larger snakes you need to start rolling forward from a little bit further back in the tail of the snake. So let's just do this. There you can see the uh, hemipene has come out and you can also see that's a sperm plug. So the hemipene is very large, it's very dark coloured and obviously this guy is mature and ready to breed because that's a sperm plug. Sperm plugs is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, it's what they are commonly called in the ball python industry. But a sperm plug is something that a male uh, uses to prevent other males from breeding her. Uh, mice do this. Uh, when they mate they will leave a sperm plug in the female that prevents the female from mating with any other male. So that's not the function of uh, these uh, little waxy packets that you see uh, in the male ball python. Um, probably sperm packets is a better term. Um, these probably are uh, packets of sperm that the male deposits in the female to be utilised when she ovulates at some later date. Only mature males have them. Um, and I've seen various explanations for what they are, none of which make any real sense. Uh, but the whole point here is that uh, only mature males have these sperm packets, so you will only see them in a mature male. The hemipenes are large and purple, there's no mistaking a mature male 
hemipene and they can be a little bit difficult to, uh, to pop, they're much more muscular than hatchlings. So how often does a male produce these things? Well, all the time during the breeding season. Uh, we know that we can put a male in from tub to tub and he will service uh, females on successive days without any issue. So the male is producing sperm all the time once he's mature, although you can obviously draw down on that reservoir and overwork your male and that increases the chances of him, what would be the term, firing blanks and uh, ending up with uh, females that slug out. So always best to make sure that your males are not overworked and have a system uh, where you can check how many females they're servicing. But they do produce sperm continuously and they can work with several different females on your rotation schedule uh, without any issues. A young male in particular you do have to watch because they are quite small and this one is 800 grams and if they go off food for instance while they are on your breeding roster a small male can lose weight and condition uh, very very quickly and so it's always best to keep your eye on a young male and make sure that you're not overworking him. Um, a larger male has obviously a lot more reserves and can continue to function for quite a long period without me meals but a smaller male uh, you do need to watch to make sure that you don't overwork him and uh, that can be detrimental to his health. And this monstrous girl here is one of my double het females. She's well over two years old, over 2,000 grams. She's actually uh, quite large and I've actually been waiting for a male to pair to this girl. She could have been paired uh, this last season, I think she would have gone, but um, I've had to wait until this season. And again, you can see um, she is a little bit nervous and she's uh, a little bit large to be taking a bite from this girl. So uh, let me just, there we go. You can see the VPI pattern that she has, the VPI exanthic pattern that she has. Again, she looks like a VPI exanthic uh, without the black and white colour. But uh, I'm fairly confident that this girl will prove out to be at least VPI exanthic and we'll test that with the visual VPI exanthic male. The clown part of the equation, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So this is the first of my pair of 66% possible het VPI exanthic and 66% possible het clown females. And already well up to size and she's been waiting for a male for a season. So let's hope the male performs for us. This girl here is her sister from the same clutch and she is 66% poshet exanthic, 66% poshet clown and in this clutch some of her siblings were visual clowns and some of her siblings were visual VPI exanthic. So she came from a het to het pairing and the resulting offspring had visuals of both exanthic and clown in the clutch. Um, so there's a very good chance that she's carrying one or other of those recessive genes or even both. So this is the other girl that we'll be working with and again she is well over two years old, slightly smaller than her sister but uh, well up to breeding size and she again has been waiting for a male uh, to go with her. So by using the visual exanthic male, 66% possible het clown, at least we will prove out the exanthic side of things. If we get any visual clowns it means that both the male and the female is also het for clown. If we don't get a visual clown uh, we, we will not know whether it's the female or the male or whether both of them are not actually hets. Okay guys let's refresh ourselves on a little bit of the genetics behind working with hets. In this case it's a double het project but we'll cover that uh, what, what exactly we mean by het to het pairings or visual to hets and what are the upsides and downsides and likely probabilities from those pairings. I thought it would be really useful uh, while we're looking at the uh, double het exanthic clown project to just quickly recap what working with hets means from a genetic standpoint and what are the advantages and disadvantages of het to het or visual to het or the various combinations. So let's just refresh our memories on what we mean by het to het. So it's a recessive gene and each parent 
carries just one copy of the gene. Uh, it's the heterozygous form of a recessive morph. So here we have the female in pink of course and the male in blue and when they breed um, only half of the genetic material is transferred to the offspring from each parent. In any form of sexual reproduction uh, the female provides half and the male provides half. So here we are with the heterozygous form of uh, in this case exanthic so we have a hetexanthic male and a hetexanthic female and when we breed them together this half of the male's genetic material contains the exanthic gene so we can breed to this half of the female which gives us one copy or to this half of the female which gives us two copies of the exanthic gene so this is a visual recessive we take this half of the male which is not carrying the gene and breed it to this half of the female and that will be this square over here with no copies of the gene or we breed it to this half of the female and also get one copy so in the case of a het to het pairing statistically for every four offspring you are going to get one visual so there is a one in four chance of producing a visual from a head to head pairing you are going to get three snakes which look like normals uh, there is no visual expression of the exanthic gene two of them will be heterozygous for exanthic they will be carrying the exanthic gene and one of them will not so of the three remaining offspring from the four two out of three or 66 percent of those offspring will be het and that's what we mean by 66 percent probability of any of these three offspring being het for exanthic so not only do we only have a one in four chance of producing a visual that's this guy over here but of the three remaining offspring out of every four we don't know which ones are actually heterozygous for exanthic and which ones are not. The other disadvantage of this is if these are only possible hets and not proven hets, if one of them turns out not to be het for exanthic, you will not get any visual exanthics. Let's say this guy turns out to be not het. What happens now? Well, you get no copies, one copy, no copies, one copy. So in this case, you will produce all normal snakes. Notice two of the babies out of the four are carrying the gene from one of the parents. So there is a 50% probability of the offspring being het for exanthic, but in this particular case, because there are no visual offspring, we do not know which of the parents is and which of the parents is not heterozygous for exanthic. So you will often hear that breeding a visual to a possible het is the only really safe way of proving out whether that possible het is actually a het. So let's do that. This is a visual exanthic paired to a het exanthic. So we take this half of the male to this half of the female and we get one copy or to this half of the female we get two copies or we take this half of the male to this half of the female and get one copy or to this half of the female and get two copies. So now we stand a much higher chance of getting visual exanthics. In this case, two out of four of the babies are visual exanthics. So you have a much better chance of seeing a visual exanthic if you use a visual exanthic with your head. It doubles the probability of achieving visual exanthics. But in this case, the ones that are not 
visual exam thicks are all kept for exam thick. So it means not only do you have a better chance of producing visuals, everything that is not visual is also going to be het. So you remove the doubt as to which of the offspring are actually carrying the het for exam thick gene and which are not. So that's the reason why it's preferable, if possible, to use a visual with your hets. And if you make the visual a male and you have a number of possible het females, that single visual male can service a, a number of possible het females and prove each of them out. So by using a visual, nothing is wasted in the clutch because everything that's produced will definitely be het for exanthic, even if the female does not prove out because you're using a visual, everything will carry at least one copy. Now, when you're dealing with double hets, this is the outcome for het to het, and it's one in four. So if this is het exanthic to het exanthic, it's one in four. And we also want clown, and if it's het clown to het clown, that's also one in four, exactly the same outcome. And we know from our genetic that each of these genes works independently. So you simply multiply out the probabilities. So it's one in four for an exanthic, one in four for a clown. Four times four is 16. So it's one in 16 for a visual exanthic clown using double hets. If we go to triple hets, the 16 becomes 64. So if you're using a triple het, the odds are now 1 in 64 of producing the triple visual. I also mentioned that I have some other combinations that I could potentially use and this is a VPI Exanthic 66% het female. Um, she is actually a year old but I don't know whether you remember um, a video that I did last year this girl was 22 grams when she hatched out and it took her two months to shed out of her baby skin. And she, she was being assist fed to keep her alive and as you can see now she's thriving. She's just uh, a little bit behind where her normal sized siblings would be but for the future this girl is perfectly capable of growing up to size, perfectly capable of breeding and we will be able to use her at some stage in the future as an additional female and again this one has the advantage that whilst we have not yet proved out whether she's het for clown at least the visual exanthic side of things is taken care of. So a candidate for the future and a look at another potential candidate for the future again uh, this was one of the runts from that uh, video that I showed again was assist fed but uh, immediately took to eating and he, uh, he has uh, grown quite considerably. Not up to breeding size yet, this is a male and he is 66% het for VPI exanthic and 66% het for clown. And from a visual standpoint you can see that he does have the VPI pattern and high contrast for the dorsal. He almost looks like a VPI exanthic without the exanthic colour. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Uh, you can see the striking similarity in the, the pattern here on the snake. It's a little bit more banded. This is quite distinctive in here. And again, you can see the same distinctive pattern on this guy here. Plus the very, very high contrast, very black uh, dorsal that VPI brings. So I'm fairly confident that this guy is going to prove out to be at least het for exanthic. And he is extremely bright. So who knows, uh, sometime in the future, if this male doesn't pan out, we can try with this male. This one being 66% pos het exanthic and 66% pos het clown. So we can mix and match if this guy doesn't do his stuff. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.